Okay, so there's something that I need to clarify about a video I made that basically tells you you don't need a vitamin D test. So that's what I'm going to do here. And in the end, you can let me know whether you agree with me or not. Hello friends. So far, I have done three videos on vitamin D and I've also done an interview with Dr. John Campbell where we talked about vitamin D. I do take vitamin D myself and members of my family take it as well as I have recommended it for them. Now, I can't recommend it for you, but I can tell you what I do and what I think about the evidence that we have so far. Before I do that, I want to thank Heart Pharmacy for sponsoring this video. So thanks to Heart Pharmacy, I'm able to keep making these videos. And if you are interested in knowing more about Heart Pharmacy news, vaccinations, and care programs, you can sign up for their newsletter at www.heartpharmacy.com newsletter. One of the most staggering things to me that has not been discussed during this pandemic is that this pandemic has exposed the serious issues in our healthcare systems. It has also exposed us to the fact that so many of us live with chronic disease like obesity, diabetes, autoimmune issues, and had these issues been prevented and treated adequately, we would not have seen so many deaths from COVID-19. And we would not have seen so many severe cases and issues with long COVID and people who will struggle for years to come because of this illness. So I think it's very likely, given the evidence that we have so far, that vitamin D may play a role in helping to reduce the severity of COVID-19, but it's definitely not a replacement for other public health measures like wearing a mask, social distancing, and following public health guidelines. It could be that vitamin D helps to reduce respiratory infections and helps to increase your ability to fight off other infections. It could also be that vitamin D helps our response to vaccinations. But regardless of all of this, when we think about our overall health and we know that vitamin D deficiency is a global health issue, I think that we need to start thinking more about our health after COVID-19 because certainly COVID-19 has exposed that as a society, we are actually much sicker and much more vulnerable to disease than we ever knew. So the reality is that we are still learning a lot about vitamin D and I think that we will learn a lot more in the future. We're going to learn a lot more about its role in the immune system, how it is able to help combat infection. I really believe that the evidence is there increasingly. So, but as to vitamin D testing, we're still learning about the significance of these tests. There are many tests out there, but not all of them are as accurate. And also once we have the results of the tests, there is still a lot of confusion among healthcare professionals even as to what the significance of certain test results actually mean and I'll talk to you a little bit about that. Let me stop here and ask you, have you started taking vitamin D during the pandemic? Maybe put your answer in the comments. I would love to hear from you and see maybe uh, what you're taking when you started taking it and uh, how much. So even having your blood levels checked and the interpretation of that test can be tricky. I recently spoke with a pharmacist who told me that in hospital he had a patient with hypercalcemia, so that's very high levels of calcium in the body and so he made the decision to check the patient's vitamin D levels. So the result that came back was quite staggering to the point that he asked for a repeat of those blood levels and the result that came back was very different and this does happen quite frequently and so this must cause us to question as to when we do have these results and if we have results that are so different what do we then do with these results? How do we interpret them? And how do we move forward with this patient? Here in Canada, it is very difficult to get your blood levels tested and have it covered by public health. And I know that this is complicated in other parts of the world as well. Here in Canada, the cost is about $90 and that's just not accessible to everyone in Canada and most people, especially in the times that we're in during COVID-19 when lots of people have lost their jobs, they're in a difficult situation economically, this is not a burden that I want to place on anyone right now. So that's why in some of my videos I have said you should ask your pharmacist for an appropriate dose because I don't want the cost or the lack of accessibility to testing to cause someone to think that this is 
not a supplement that they could take. If you have access to vitamin D testing and you want to get tested and you have a healthcare professional that will follow up with these tests and give you some guidelines, then absolutely get a test. But if you don't, don't think that this is not for you or that this is something that you cannot take. Ask a healthcare professional like a pharmacist to make a recommendation that is safe for you. And I think that you will be pleasantly surprised with the results. To summarize this, there's really three main reasons why I'm suggesting that you go to a pharmacy and talk to a pharmacist about vitamin D if it's something that you're wondering about supplementing. So the first reason is, is the accessibility. Pharmacists are extremely accessible. You can walk into a pharmacy at any time. There is always a pharmacist there. Part of our job is to consult patients who are walking in and have health questions. Now in a pharmacy, we also have vitamin D right there. It's available in many different formulations, many different brands, and the pharmacist can often help you select a dose and a formulation that is right for you. So the second reason is in regards to the mail order tests that you can order online. They get sent to your home, you do them and then you send them back. And these tests are not available everywhere and they can be quite expensive. Here in Canada, I've not been able to access one. I've not been able to find one. If you know of one in Canada, please do let me know. I would love to hear about it. And then once you do get these results, what are you supposed to do with this? And how do you follow up? Do you do another test in a few months? And who is watching this for you? And who is making these recommendations as to how high to go or how low to go? It's really more advisable for you to be followed by a healthcare professional. But again, not everyone has access to that at this point in time. And then the third reason is also about follow-up. And often I've seen doctors who do request lab work, but they do not follow up. They are not consistently in contact with the patient. And this is very important. If you are paying for any kind of test, you need to have follow-up. You need to know how to interpret those results. You need to know what you should do going forward. Should you increase or decrease your dose? Should you stop? And this is all very important. People think often that vitamins are something that you can just take and it doesn't really affect anything, but vitamins can actually have serious effects on different medications and on an individual depending on their state of health. So when we are ingesting something that is foreign, it's important that you do have follow-up from a healthcare professional. And if you don't have access to a healthcare professional that is dedicated to you and that is going to follow up consistently with you, then you need to have at least a pharmacist to talk to, to walk in and to be able to discuss these issues with. Vitamin D is readily accessible, it is not expensive, and so it's something that I feel very comfortable recommending. I don't like to see patients spend their money on something that is not necessarily going to help them, but vitamin D is one of the few ones that I frequently recommend and have been recommending since I started out as a pharmacist over 10 years ago. If you're interested in more information about vitamin D, including my most recent video about vitamin D regarding immunity in older adults, I'll put the link right up here and I will put the link to the other videos in the description for this video as well. And I love hearing from my viewers, so leave a comment below, let me know what you thought of this video, and even if you have ideas for future videos, I always read the comments and I try to respond to as many of them as I possibly can. So thank you again for joining me, take care and stay healthy. Bye bye.